Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today I'll solve the problem robot collisions. So there's just going to be one solution for this problem. So that's the good thing. Now as for the description here, um, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get straight to the example. So the idea is we're given a bunch of robots on a one dimensional line of some sort. So we have the position of each robot. It's going to be distinct. No two robots are going to start at the same position. So that's very important in the context of this problem. Because what this problem is about is robot collisions, as the name implies. So if two robots ever land on the same position, one of them is guaranteed to be destroyed. So that's kind of the gist of the problem. Now let's get into it. Each robot has a certain amount of health. So you can see that this robot is at position five. So even though it's first in the array, it's actually all the way over here. Now at that same index, we have a corresponding health. Notice that the health of this robot is two. Cool. Now this part kind of bugs me. They give us two input arrays and then for the direction that the robot is moving in, it could either be left or right. They don't give us an array. They give us a string, which is fine, but I don't know, maybe it's OCD or something, but that kind of bothered me. I don't know. In any case, in this example, it's very simple. Every robot is moving to the right. So there's not going to be any collisions among any of these five robots. Now, even though this is a simple example, it can still teach you a couple things. One, the speed doesn't matter. We're not given the speed of any of the robots. So how do we determine if two robots collide? Well, they're moving in opposite directions, right? Or is it true that like opposite directions is fine? Because if I have one robot moving to the left and I have another robot moving to the right, they're probably not going to collide, right? So the only way they're going to collide is if the robot on the left is moving to the right and the next robot is moving to the left. When I said the next robot, what does that mean to you? The next robot that shows up in the next position? or like the next position of the input array? No, probably the next robot in terms of like chronological order based on like the position of each robot from left to right. So probably we might wanna sort the input based on the position. Okay, interesting now. Again, this first example is pretty interesting because let's assume we go through each robot in sorted order based on the position. We go to this robot first, even though it shows up last in the input. We see this robot is moving to the right, that's fine. Next robot is moving to the right, that's fine. Next robot is moving to the right, that's fine as well. And it's just gonna keep going like that. There's no collisions, right? So now let's consider the opposite case. I got a robot moving to the left, that's fine. Another robot moving to the left, that's also fine. Now if I had a robot moving to the right, that's also fine by me. So one thing I noticed is that if I have a robot like let's say at the beginning of the input and it's going to the left, it's pretty irrelevant to the problem, isn't it? Like, what do we do with this guy? He's never gonna collide with anybody. It's just gonna keep going in that direction, living its best life, but like nobody's ever gonna catch up to it. So from the beginning, if we have somebody moving to the left, that's fine, doesn't matter. But if there was, suppose another robot here, now I got a robot moving to the left and this time it matters because while we don't care about this one, we don't care about this one, this one is now moving to the right, this one is moving to the left. So if we get a robot moving to the left and the previous robot was moving to the right, that's where there is a collision. Therefore, you might get the idea of using a stack. Now among these two robots, when they do collide, it's not gonna be trivial because remember that each robot has some kind of health. So at this point, I think we can start going through this example and seeing how we can try to use a stack on it. Again, assume we take the positions and we sort them. So we're iterating through these in sorted order. So let's say something like this to, in this case, this is the robot at position two. If we sort this, how are we gonna be able to get the health of that robot and the direction of that robot? Well, the easiest way is just before we sort it, just create a mapping for each robot, take the position. Since we know the position is gonna be unique, we can use that as a key for a hash map of some sorts. And then we can create a mapping with that position, mapping it to the original index. And then we can use that index to get either the direction or the health. But this is kind of a small part of the solution. Just assume that we have a way to get the health of each robot and the direction 
description of it for now. Let's just assume that. So going through these in sorted order, first robot, two. It's moving to the right. It has health of 15. Next robot at position three. I guess I'll just kind of use this drawing because it's pretty good. Health 10, position three. Now, these are moving to the right. So if we have a stack here and I'm keeping track of it, Let's say I have two and I have three, and these are both moving to the right. We know if I add another robot that's moving to the right, there's never a collision. It doesn't matter if the previous robot is moving to the right or it's moving to the left. If the current robot is moving to the right, it's not gonna collide with anybody to the left of it. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? How could this guy collide with somebody on the left? It's literally moving to the right. That's pretty simple, I think. Next. We get the third robot. It's moving to the left. And that might be okay, but the previous robot will check the top of the stack is moving to the right. So we have the collision. Now the question is, how do we handle that collision? In the context of this problem, they say the health is what matters. So the health of this guy is a 10, as you can see over here. The health of this guy is also 10. Now, if both robots have the same health, both robots will be destroyed. Now, if the robot over here had more health, suppose it had 11 instead of 10, of course, this robot is going to be the one that gets destroyed. But you might think that the health is going to be updated by subtracting the health from this one, like 11 uh, minus 10. That's not the case, actually. If this robot got hit with another robot, it collided with another robot, that is, we'd only subtract one, regardless of the health of the other robot. I thought that was kind of surprising, but that's the context of the problem, so we will go with it. So in this case, both of them have the same health, so in this case, what do we do? Well, we decide never to add this one to the stack. It never got added to the stack to begin with, and this one got popped from the stack. So um, just pop it. Now, imagine... If it was slightly different, just for the sake of arriving at the final solution, look here, if this was 11, this was 10, we get rid of this, okay, great. But this one is still moving to the left, and it looks to me that the top of the stack is still moving to the right. So what I'm getting at is, we might not just pop, like if we get to a new robot, a single robot might not just collide with one robot, it might collide with multiple. Therefore, when we are popping from the stack, we're not going to need an if statement. We're going to need a loop, probably a while loop. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, this got popped. Now we are at the final robot. It is at this position. We don't really care about the positions, though. Notice that, right? We don't really do anything with the positions. We're just using them to go through the robots in sorted order. We do care about the health, though. And we also care about, of course, the top of the stack. It's moving to the right. This guy is moving to the left. There's a collision, therefore. So this one, the top of the stack has a higher health, 15. So this one will never be pushed to the stack. The way we're going to code this up is by popping this from the stack, seeing its health is 15, subtracting that by one. So now it's going to be 14. And then we're going to end up adding it back to the stack. Now, I think we're pretty much ready to code up the solution for a hard problem. I think this one is somewhat approachable, not saying it's easy. Don't be confused. Just because I can kind of make it look easy doesn't mean it necessarily is. But in terms of complexity analysis, recognize that we go through the inputs. So we always knew it's going to be at least big O of n. But we did do some sorting beforehand, so it's going to be n log n. Now, the two data structures I'm going to use, of course, the stack. And I mentioned earlier at the beginning that we are going to have some sort of mapping from the positions to the original indexes so that we can get the direction and health of each robot. We'll do that before we sort the array. Now, one tiny last thing that maybe I shouldn't mention immediately. Maybe I should save this for later, but I think I want to just mention it now. If we started with a robot that was going to the left, didn't I say that that robot would never collide with anybody? So, I mean, we could add it to the stack, but there's no need to. In the previous simulation I just ran, we ended with one robot and the robot's health was 14. What we want to return, I should have probably mentioned, is the health of each remaining robot. But not only that, we want to return it in relative order that the robots appear from left to right. So if there's only one robot, it's just going to be 14. Imagine there were two robots left. Imagine it was these two robots that are left. We'd want their healths in relative order. So 15 would go first, 12 would go second. This would be the output. So that's something, again, we'll be able to do with the index map. We'll just get all remaining robots that have a health that is greater than zero. What I was getting at earlier is if I have a robot at the beginning, the stack is empty, 
and it's moving towards the left. It's not colliding with anybody right now, therefore it's never gonna collide with anybody. So what I'm gonna do is actually just not add it to the stack. We can skip doing that. It might seem like a small thing right now, but it does make the code slightly easier. I'll show you uh, both variations just to prove it to you. I wanna quickly mention that before I started recording this video, I was actually working on a Python for Coding interviews course. I'm only showing this to you right now because I'm literally gonna be using these techniques that I've been adding to this course, like literally right now. I'm gonna be using several tips and tricks. If you wanna see all of them in one organized place, check out this Python for Coding interviews course. It'll be released in a couple days. Okay, but getting into the solution. Remember how I said we were gonna sort the input positions, but before we sort it, we wanna have some mapping. We wanna preserve the original input index of each position. Now we could do that with like a regular loop, but Python has something called dictionary comprehension. So we can actually do it in a one liner. So what I'm gonna say is for I in range, or actually I think there's a better way. And I think I also cover this in my course. So for I P in enumerate uh, the positions. So this way we get the index and the position. We wanna map the position to the index. So very clean, nice code here. Can't really do this in most languages, am I right? Now getting into the stack portion, we're gonna declare a stack, it's initially gonna be empty. It's gonna store the positions. Actually on second thought, I did mention that the positions are never gonna be used, so it probably makes more sense to just store the indexes. Let's try this actually. Now I'm gonna go through each position. This we have to do, we have to go through the positions in sorted order. And actually the easier way to do this would be something like this, if I just uh, make this sorted. So this will actually create a sorted copy but still we'll need uh, this mapping up here. We'll need to be able to map this position to its original index. But now let's get the index because it's going to be needed because um, we're going to be appending the index to the stack. So let's uh, use that index map we have up there. Now, remember there were two cases, the direction. That's what matters in this problem. So up above, we can check using the string that was given to us if this is equal to R. Because if it's moving to the right, it's not gonna collide with anybody to the left. Doesn't matter what direction the robots to the left are moving in, this is not gonna collide with them. So we can just go ahead and append it to the stack. Otherwise, we got our robot moving to the left. How do we know if it's gonna collide with anybody? Well, while the stack is non-empty and while the direction of the robot at the top of the stack so let's get the top of the stack uh, like this, negative one of this stack. So that's the index. Then we get the direction of it. Now, if the top of the stack is moving to the right, and remember our current robot is moving to the left because that's the else case, then we want to start doing some stuff while this is the case. So we don't know immediately here which one of the two robots has a larger health. So we can't just do that in the if statement because there's going to be a bunch of arithmetic going on. We're going to do that inside of the while loop because we might have to subtract from one of the healths. So I'm going to in here, I'm going to pop the top guy. It's going to give us the index. I'm going to call it I2. Maybe I should call it J. I don't know. But anyways, remember there are three potential cases. One where the health of one robot, let's call it I, is greater than the health of the other robot and vice versa, so else if. And third, finally, is when they are equal. That's the simple case actually, so I'm gonna handle that first. Let's just set the health of, it's called healths by the way, in case you end up making that typo. I really hope I don't make that typo here, but I is equal to health of I2, which is gonna be equal to zero. So both of them are set to zero. The other two cases aren't too bad either, Suppose the health of the current robot is greater than the one that was previous to the left, then the health of that robot, I2, can be set to zero. It was destroyed, but the first robot, I, is just gonna be decremented by one. It did collide with the other robot, but it was not necessarily destroyed. And it definitely wasn't destroyed because it has a larger health than the other one. So yeah, we only decrement it by one and we assume that this robot had at least a health of two because I think every health is gonna be guaranteed to be positive. Now, this case is gonna be very similar. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. So it's gonna be the opposite. So this one is gonna be set to zero and I2 is gonna be decremented. And I should probably change the direction of this as well. So this is when the other robot was larger. So this robot was the one that got destroyed. This is pretty close to the final solution. Maybe this is what makes it a hard problem. It's kind of subtle, but we're missing something here. Imagine we have some robots moving to the right like this, and then we get a robot that moves to the left. 
this one. Suppose both of them collide. Suppose both of them are destroyed. That's very simple, right? It looks like our code is going to handle that because this guy gets popped and I don't think I1 ever gets added in this case right now. So that case is simple. But what about the other case? What about when the left one gets destroyed? Well, it looks like our thing is kind of handling that too. This one is going to get destroyed. Our loop is going to keep going because the top is still moving to the right. But what if we deleted all of them? Well, in that case, after all of this is said and done, when the loop is finished down here, we should say something like if healths of i is greater than zero. In Python, you can just say if healths of i. If that's the case, let's go ahead and append it right at the end. So here, we'll go ahead and append index i. Now we handled that case, but there's one other one that we did not handle actually. So these two collide. Suppose this one gets destroyed. Boom. This one stayed alive. What are we missing? in this code. Well, that case was right here. The top of the stack was bigger, so the current robot got destroyed. Well, we popped the robot to the left, right? We moved this off of the stack. We should probably add it back to the stack if this is the case. So in that if statement, I'm going to say this one was destroyed. This one stayed alive. Go ahead and add I2 back to the stack. So here I'm going to say append I2. Two. Okay, beautiful. We're almost done now. But again, we're kind of missing something. If this robot got destroyed, our loop isn't necessarily going to stop, but we want it to stop, right? Our current robot, which was the one that was uh, moving to the left, it was the one that got destroyed. And there still might be some other robots left. Well, how do we know if that's the case? It's pretty easy. We'll add another condition to our loop. We'll say and health of i is greater than zero, or we can just say health of i. So now we finally have pretty much everything right at the end. What we want to return is the healths of the robots, and we want to do it in relative order. So let me do something clever, kind of like how I did up above dictionary comprehension. I can do list comprehension down here. So for every health in healths, I'm going through these in order. Notice that. If the health of a robot is greater than zero, notice that we did modify the healths as we went, so we'll know if they were set to zero. If it's greater than zero, then let's add it to the list. So I can do something very clean, one line like this. Isn't Python amazing? So I'm going to run this now. As you can see, it works. It's pretty efficient. There's just one little, it's not an optimization. I just want to kind of clean up the code a tiny bit. Remember how this else case is the case where a robot is moving to the left, right? So like I kind of showed in the comments, something like this, like our current robot is the one moving to the left. In what case would this if statement execute? In which case would this loop terminate and the health of the current robot was still greater than zero only if it collided with all the previous people and destroyed them and still stayed alive. OK, what's so special about that case? Well, now it's never going to collide with anybody again, right? It's moving to the left. I don't see how it would ever collide with anybody. Everybody has already been destroyed. So we don't need this if statement down here. I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to go one step further. If I remove that if statement, I'm basically saying we're never going to have robots moving to the left from the beginning of the stack. OK, so we're only going to begin with robots moving to the right. That makes sense to me. And then if there is a robot moving to the left, it will either be destroyed or it will destroy all the other robots like this, right? Or it will be destroyed, maybe taking out some of the other robots in the process. But either way, our stack will look like this. What I'm getting at is we don't need this right here. We know if the stack is non-empty, the top of the stack is always moving to the right. In other words, every robot on the stack is moving to the right. Why would we have a robot moving to the left? I mean, I guess we could have a case like this, but why would we have that? Like I said, we don't want anything beginning that's moving to the left. So what I'm getting at is just get rid of this here as well. Not a big optimization or anything, but it does make the solution a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and run this as well and see it also works. I guess it's more efficient this time, but please don't pay attention to this stuff. It's pretty useless. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.